Hello, I'm John Paul. I'm here at Rimmer Brothers today to do an engine service on this Range Rover L322 3.6 V8 diesel. Before we get started on the nitty gritty, we're under the bonnet, so let's just have a look around, check everything visually. Check the coolant level, check all your hoses and connections are all okay, check your brake fluid level, your battery security, the, um, um, the um, terminals as well, and check your power steering level, screen wash level, just have a general check over, make sure everything looks okay before we uh, actually start the job. We're going to change the oil and filter first, so first thing we'll just lift up the top engine cover tray, it's on the little just on the little rubber poppers so once that's out of the way we can see the location of the oil filter which is right in the middle of the engine here first thing to do underneath is get the under trays out of the way so there's four of your plastic little screws at the front just to lift that out of the way and then it's just your 10 mils bolts all the way around or 10 mil spanner size bolts all the way around the under tray so we can remove them so we can see the underneath of the engine I've got all the under trays off underneath so we can give it a good visual inspection just to make sure everything's as it should be. Just have a look, check the auxiliary drive belt, make sure there's no cracks in it, all looks okay. Just notice one of the uh, pipe clamps here, the rubber grommet's broken so I'm going to replace that shortly. And it's got a bit of an oil leak as well, so we're going to investigate that. Looks like it's possibly coming from the steering rack. But anyway, so everything else seems to look okay. So now I'm going to get my um, spanner and drop the oil. Now it holds nine and a half litres of oil, so make sure whatever you drain it into has got the capacity to take nine and a half litres. So the uh, sump plug is just on the right hand side of the lower sump, just pointed towards the subframe there. So just in case you get a 13 mil socket, crack it off, and then say get your oil receptacle, drain the oil into it. Okay, so I'm draining the oil. Once it's all drained, we'll put a new sump plug in and we'll torque it up to 23 newton metres. So I've replaced it with a new sump plug and then tighten it up to 23 newton metres. I'm not going to put the under trays back on yet because I'm going to wait until I've filled it up with oil, had the engine run in, make sure there's no leaks. So take the oil filter off now, so 32 mil socket, slacken that off and then just keep on screwing it. And if you lift the oil filter housing out, the oil filter should come with it. Just be careful to lift out as straight as possible to not have too many drips of oil. Turn it upside down and then we can replace it with a new filter. Just going to replace the, the oil seal. So just get a small screwdriver. Just pick out the seal. And just refit the new one, just roll it down into the, into the groove. that then get the new oil filter you see the new oil filter's got the new noggin on the bottom well a noggin on the bottom as you once you've clipped it into the housing as you refit it back into the um, into the oil filter hole it will just pick up its own hole and sit in there but just be careful if it feels if it doesn't feel right make sure that you know you don't just tighten it up and break that so make sure you do it and you feel it go into the hole so the filter refitted and the housing down which is a 32 mil socket and a torque wrench and it wants torquing down to 35 newton meters now I'm going to top it up with engine oil, so just release the cap, just pull out the dipstick tube and then say nine and a half litres and then check it on the dipstick and then start the engine. So that's the oil topped up, I've run the engine, now it's just time to recheck it, make sure that the oil level is correct. Yep, as you can see it is, it's bang on the mark, absolutely brilliant. I'm now going to change the cabin filter, which is located under this little flap on the bulkhead here. So there's four little clips to push down. You might want to get a hook just so you can pull the plastic cover back up. It comes up like that. Use the same hook. You just grab hold of the pollen filter. Oops. And then slide it all the way out. And there we are. And then we can refit it with a new one. It's just a case of sliding it in push the cap back down and then just clip it in between the four clips that hold the flap shut. Now move on to the air filter. There's six Phillips screws, three down each side. And the two air, I'm probably going to take the airflow meter and the pipes off so we can lift the whole housing off so we can see exactly what it's like underneath. So just lift the little clips for your airflow meters, the two Jubilee clips for your pipes, and then the six Phillips screws around the housing then we can lift it off and we'll have a look at the air filter and clean the housing out properly. 
So that's the air filter top off. Just place it out of the way. Now we can remove the, the air filter. Now then, we're going to just remove the lower part of the air filter for two reasons. Firstly, we can clean it out properly. We can empty all the little bits of straw and leaves out of there. But also, it makes it easier access for the fuel filter. So whilst the air filter is all out of the way, we'll then change the fuel filter. The lower part of the, uh, the air filter removed, and it's fairly simple removal. You just uh, pull it up so it comes out of one of the rubber plugs there. And there's two rubber plugs that go into the inner wing. And just be able to be careful when you're putting it back that the grommet that goes from the inlet pipe to the inner wing just seals it up properly so it makes sure that that's back in place properly. So to remove the fuel filter there's a plastic lock-in ring at the top of the filter and just be aware of the, where the markings on the filter are, the arrow up because the filter will only fit in one place. I'll show you that in a second. So with the lock-in ring out of the way you just wiggle the filter down out of its housing and then we can pull it to one side as you can see, there's these little cutouts here, and they're all different sizes, so they only fit in one way. So if you know where the arrow on the front of the filter is, and mark it up to the front of the filter housing, then that's where it's going to go. So I'm going to, um, oh, this one's got a water sensor in the bottom of this one, so we'll have to swap that onto the new filter housing. So it's just unscrew that. Just have to make sure that when you're doing that, the fuel will come out. So you'll have to make sure that you catch the fuel. So we'll fit the lock ring back on the filter before we fit the water sensor, otherwise it won't go on. Spin that all so it's nice and tight. Then we'll fill the fuel filter with the fuel treatment before we fit the filter. And then that just gives it a good clean and aid starting as well, so that's all good. Once that's topped up, we'll put the filter back on, just remember the arrow on the front of the filter to the arrow on the front of the housing so it all goes back in the same place because it only does go in one place so once that's the filter is all plugged into place you then get the sealing ring the locking ring sorry and just turn it round till it clips back into place so i'm just going to fit the lower air filter housing now so i've made sure that the rubber seal between the air filter and the um, inner wing is all in place and just feed it down, push it to one side to go past the rubber mount and then you push the two pegs into the inner wing, clip it in at the bottom and then that's the lower bit fitted. So we'll pop the new air filter back in the housing, refit the top so you just have to slide it in, lift up the intake pipes, I know it's a little bit awkward, lift up the intake pipes, plonk it all back together tighten your jubilee clips, your six screws back together and then we're ready to start the engine. So that's all back together now so it's just a case of replacing the top engine cover, push it down onto the rubbers and nip underneath, make sure there's no leaks, replace the engine covers and that's the engine service done.